Hi there, this is Angus Patey at Fujifilm, another technical tech talk for you. So today I want to talk about how you can use the X-Rite Exact uh, to verify and validate your G7 color conformance. So a lot of times uh, you're going on press and you need to uh, make sure that your initial linear run, if you're doing a certification, uh, adheres to a Grackel specification. So just to be clear on the terminology, uh, G7 is a calibration methodology, right? So G7 is the way in which we build the curves from your solid to your white. So basically, if you think about Photoshop, you've got a white point and a black point. When printing, we've got a white point, which is our paper, and we've got solids, which are CMYK. So we need to establish the white point, which is the paper value, and we need to establish our solids, our traps, and all of that. Those are the initial things that we want to be targeting when we're doing uh, a Grackle press run. We want to make sure that the LEV values are close to the uh, target values that are specified by Grackle. So CRPC6 and Grackle 2013 are the same thing, so I use that as my target values. Um, if I was to click into this window, uh, we would be able to see all the target values for the individual components, right? So we can see what is the uh, swatch color, you know, what are the values and all of that kind of thing, right? So it, it, the whole library is built in, in t internally into this. Um, to get those values, you could download them from the X-Rite website. Um, if you were to add uh, a, te a template, a job template, you would import a job template. Uh, and that will take you to, which I already have, the X-Rite exact job template for G7. And these are all the new version 2 ones that are available from X-Rite. So you would download those first, unzip that, put it on your desktop, and then load whichever ones you need to use for your shop. Most people are going to be using the Grackle 2013 CRPC6. That works great for packaging, works great for most offset printing conditions. So. This is the X-Rate Exact Manager. It's also free and available from X-Rate. You tether your device by USB to your laptop or computer. It then shows up on the bottom. This is your Exact, and this is my hard drive, what's available. So I have already copied this into uh, here. So I'm going to show you how I use those. So let me load that up, and we'll get uh, it as set up as a remote control version so that we can look at the same thing together. So the G7 tool for most people is going to be available there, but if you swipe right on the screen as I just did and you hit the plus button, it will allow you to add certain tools that may not be on your home screen. So if the G7 tool isn't there, you want to go in and add that, okay? So let's go back and go to the G7 tool. So basically I'm just, I can do it with a mouse, I'm just touching on the screen and that's what's coming up on there. So I'll use the mouse so you can see what I'm doing. I click on the G7 job tool and here we could use, uh, let's create a new one. You know, so I'm going to click on here where it says test one. That way we don't have anything. I'm going to create a new job name, click on the top, and we're going to call this uh, test three. Oops, you can't get to key. You have to click there. T-E-S-T. -E Come on, catching up. It's slower when you're doing it via the remote S. T, numerical, come on, and three. Okay, that was painful. Okay, all right, so we got our job name, test three. We're going to select that. Got all my other jobs that are loaded on here. I'm using the Grackle, the CRPC 2013, right? And no samples. So I click OK, and that's going to bring me into my job window where I can do that. So now I'm going to measure the white point of the sheet that I'm using. Uh, my battery is low, of course, so we're going to plug that in too. That's what happens with a live demo. Okay, so we've got that plugged in. We're now going to measure the paper white. Okay, so I've also got my press sheet here um, in front of me that has been used for a grackle. So I want to explain to you how this window works and a little bit about what's called compensation. So white point compensation, this Delta E formula for this particular press sheet does not pass the Grackle 2013 specification. It's not blue enough. The Grackle uh, 2013 is a bluer white point. It would be probably a four or a five on the B, B side. Um, so we're a six Delta E away, okay? Um, 
I'm using the very strict Delta E. I'm not using Delta E 2000 or CMC because I want to make sure that if I can pass here at a very, very strict Delta E, which is the Delta E, oh no, this is Delta E 2000, my apologies. With a zero, zero there, um, Delta E 2000 is what's being used. So it's a little bit more generous. So six is a fairly big uh, amount. With compensation turned on, it's going to compensate and help all of your other targets match to the Grackle spec, but by using this white point. So I would recommend in all cases that you do do this because, <laughs> do do, that you do this because it is going to bring you cl closer to a realistic target for your print condition. If you're doing a G7 uh, certification, they allow for paperweight compensation. Um, you just have to be whether it's absolute or relative when you're submitting, and they will accept it if you're using your own stock. It doesn't have to hit the Grackle white point. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, it will influence other jobs if you have a different paper stock going through that you've validated on this stock. So if you're creating curves for this stock and you're going to the Grackle spec and you want it to be specific for this one, you can use compensation, okay? Next, if I click on the solids tab, which is the second one here, it brings me to this window. So now I can start measuring my individual solids. And I can go through and continue to measure each one of these and populate them into the window to show you, you know, what I've done. So I, like I say, I have a press sheet down here in front of me. Okay, so I've got everything pretty close except I've got a fail on my black. I've got a 5.6 delta E on the black. If I want to dig into that a little bit more, I can click on this top icon here. With it, the four checkboxes says it's going to show me a lot of information at once. If I click on that, it's going to show me information just about that one color. Okay? So here we can see that if I increase my black by 0 0.08, I'm only going to get a 508. So this is a really important uh, distinction. And this is where we had trouble on press with this particular job, is that the black wasn't making the change enough. It wasn't matching the specification, even with the paper compensation. So in this case, we had to change the black, okay? Because what it's telling you in best match here is that right now at a 1.60, if I was to go up to maybe a 1.65, six, you know, in that range, I'm only going to get a 0.58, a 5.8, right? There's no way a density move is going to match the color needed in this black. So this black doesn't have what's needed in order to be able to hit the target values. I'm just trying to see if I can find uh, where that might show you the delta. So here I can show you uh, it's in the B, right? It's in the blueness, which is what we're talking about. It's just not able to make uh, a change. We we're not able to get there. So in this case, we went to a different black. We had to load that black into the black unit, clean off, the, clean off the press and run it again, and we matched it great. So that's what's really valuable about this tool is it tells you in best match whether or not you can actually hit that target. I'd also like to try to bring these down a little bit, right? So if I go into the magenta, I'm going to click on the magenta, and then I'm going to go into the, the best match there. Um, it's at a 1.59. That's high for a magenta, right? So it's telling us if you bring that down by 0.27, probably get it down in the 1.35 range, you're going to get a 0.48 delta E. So that's what we did. So we brought that down in, in subsequent uh, runs, uh, pulls. We were able to get a better uh, match on that. So a 0.48 is great. You might only get to a 1.0 realistically, but that's still the case. Same on the yellow. We were way too high on the yellow density, a 1.22. Generally, I'm like a 105 to a 1.0. It's telling me if I bring it down to that 1.0 range, I'm going to get a 0.87 match. So this, these inks are fine. These inks do have the ability and the density to remain at the right hue and to be able to hit those numbers. And best match is super useful because it tells you exactly what to do on the density and exactly how you need to change your press conditions in order to match it. And you can see that a 1.2 is obviously too high. Um, next thing you're gonna wanna do, once you get these into the one range, you're gonna wanna go into your traps and you're gonna measure your uh, red, blue, and green. I'm gonna measure those. I'd be surprised if they pass because we have some pretty high values uh, going on. So 0.7 on the red, not bad. That one's good. Um, green, oh, they're surprising me. This is great. We're getting nice numbers on here. Uh, 2.5. We'll probably do a little bit better on that one. And 2.2. Uh, they're passing. So hopefully when we bring those numbers down, we're going to continue to pass on the other ones. Um, but what that tells me is, though, 
if I bring them down too much, like they are passing, right? You would pass for your certification. If by bringing those down, you'd lost your traps, then you know you have to kind of compensate here to go a little bit higher on the delta on the solids in order to get the secondaries to pass. So good information, that's absolutely great. So if this was say a linear run for a grackle setup, I would stop there once I got these down into the 1.0, save those sheets, measure them and build some curves. So there's other tools in here that you can use. There's a the dot gain tool for your 25, 50, 75. I'll show you one of those um, and then we will call it a day because that's just over 10 minutes. That's what I like to do on a 10 minute tech talk. Sounds like tick tock. <laughs> and there's the last one. Those are pretty good. I'm very happy with those values. Usually between 16 and 18 is where you want your 50% to be. Uh, and then a slight little curve on the side. Usually if they're the same, it's a, it's a nice perfect bell curve, but we've got a slight drop at the 75, but not too bad. So. That concludes our 10 minute tech talk. It's gonna be an 11 minute tech talk. Um, talks a little bit about how you can utilize uh, this tool, the G7 tool for validating and printing to a G7 uh, print run for the, the Grackle specification. So thanks a lot. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.